si sám vyvinul, tak to sám tvý institutionál for psychologii být všepenhámským držitěm. Si sám hrvořka vymluvil o kvíli behandlí psychoterapii pacienta na experstavní a posaršit vývinný klík po angličních monster, jako jste se pacienta vyvinul na data. Pokud dá chvíli indivíky a aktuál studií, a to si můžu říct. Prvná. Tak skal du have. Jeg har besluttet at tale på engelsk. Jeg skal bare se, hvordan det fungerer. Hvordan får jeg den fulde ned? Hvor skal jeg gå her hen? om jeg skal stå op eller sidde ned. Jeg tror, jeg skal sidde ned. Acknowledging that it is difficult to understand Danish, especially for the Finnish, and I think of you, Johannes, I have decided to give my talk in English. However, when it comes to improvise and to answer questions, i feel very much in line with your famous poet, Tranströmer, when he compares the difficulty in finding words with the silver flashing at the pawnbroker's disc. Thus, in the discussion part, I would prefer to change to Danish. First of all, I would like to thank all of you who have been involved in organizing this conference for inviting me and for the important initiative to start to build up a Nordic chapter of the Society for Psychotherapy Research. Several of my Danish colleagues are interested in this initiative, but because of the autumn holidays this week, the younger of them with children who goes to school didn't have the possibility to attend this conference. So maybe next time the conference could be in another week. <laughs> we have talked very, very much about this several years. This study, the study I'm going to present, is made in collaboration with my colleague Steve Paulson and Sarah Daniel. The study is nested in a randomized controlled trial of psychoanalytic psychotherapy and cognitive behavioral therapy for bulimia nervosa. The history of this study dates back to a European eating disorder conference in Stockholm, which I attended in the early 90s. At this conference, it was striking that psychoanalytic thinking and practice were totally excommunicated from the field of eating disorders because of the lack of RCTs, because of the lack of randomized controlled trials. The results from our RCT study are not yet published, but from the data up to now, it can be concluded that CBT is clearly superior in relieving, curing the bulimic symptoms. Whatever, the, however, may be, the picture will change when we have our follow-up data. But we have them, I think, in two years, we will have the follow-up data. Can, can you hear me? It's, it's loud enough? Yes. yes. It could be louder. I will try. But however, not all bulimic clients profit from CBT, of course. 
especially not those with a preoccupied attachment pattern. And measured with the AAI, the so-called Adult Attachment Interview. And PBT, that means psychoanalytic psychotherapy, is very helpful in several cases. Whatever the results in the long run, randomized control trials have their value in being able to demonstrate links between a specific therapy and outcome. However, they consist of generalizations and cannot answer more in-depth questions such as why some patients profit from one therapy while others do not. They also rely on quantitative measures, making no room for a more differentiated evaluation of what <coughs> constitutes successful versus less successful therapy cases. In this paper, I will present a qualitative exploration of PPT cases with good and <coughs> symptomatic outcome measured as remission versus lack of clinical significant change in core bulimic psychopathology. The aim is to get a more differentiated picture of the labels good and poor outcome and to learn about strength and limitations of PPT for preoccupied bulimic patients by looking at those who profit as well as those who do not. As we have just finished our randomized control study, this qualitative study is in its beginning and has the status of work in progress. Subjects. In the RCT, 36 patients were randomized to CBT, 34 to PPT. Of the 34 PPT cases, 12 patients were classified as preoccupied. Of these 12, four were selected for a further explorative analysis. The intention behind the selection of the cases was to demonstrate the diversity in outcomes hidden behind the category, categorization into good and bad outcome. Thus, there has been no intention to imply strictly objective selection criteria. Still, the selection process has followed a systematic approach. Subjects. The selected cases were one patient recovered, fully recovered case A, one unchanged with regard to bulimic symptoms, but changed as regards attachment patterns. Case B, and unchanged. This doesn't mean that the, the bulimic symptom wasn't reduced, but it means that the patient can't be categorized as either recovered or remitted. Recovered is when you have no symptoms at all, remitted if you have only one bulimic uh, episode per week, but I'll come back to that. One unchanged with regard to bulimic symptoms as well as attachment pattern, and one unchanged drop-out drop case. Procedure. No, measures. <laughs> Data from the eating disorder examination pre as well as post therapy values. Data from the SKID2 interview from the inventory of interpersonal problems and the BDI2 and from a so-called client experience interview will be presented briefly for each subject. The client experience interview is an expanded version of Robert Elliott's client change interview schedule, which we have termed the client experience interview. The purpose of this semi-structured interview was to help clients express their experience of the therapy as freely as possible, while at the same time obtaining information elucidating the more specific research questions. Procedures. As 
The audio tapes are not yet transcribed, and we haven't money yet to get them transcribed. Both of the first authors, Steve Pogelsen and I, listened through the interviews and took extensive notes, focusing, focusing especially on expectations and motivation, experience of the therapy, experience of the therapist, and the process of the therapy, change, for example, in the therapeutic relationship, turning points, etc., and outcome from a qualitative perspective. And finally, a consensual description of each case was, case was made. After listening to our interview, we compared our notes, discussed the content of the interview pertaining to each themes, and produced a consensual description of each case. And now I will go on to the four cases. Case A. Case A represents the most extreme case in the whole sample because she had a particularly traumatic background and a special case she also was because she someone somehow unexpectedly fully recovered with regard to binging and purging as the only client in the sample with a preoccupied attachment pattern. In the AAI, she describes her relationship to her mother as fearful, humiliating and disgusting, and it became clear that she had been subjected to severe, to severe sexual abuse her whole life and violence from her mother and a neighbor throughout her life. She had a borderline personality disorder and did indeed act as a borderline patient. She lived together with a criminal biker with whom she had a violent relationship. She had self-mutilating behavior in addition to her bulimic symptoms and she had a long career with eating disorders of different kinds. At intake, and after termination of the therapy, her results on the different measures were. You can see them on the slide. And you can see that she had very uh, many binges and purges before the treatment. And that after 24 months, the PPT therapy had a duration of two years. She were cured for all of them. However, she was still preoccupied. <clears throat> if we're looking more on this patient, we can see that she had very high hopes and was highly motivated, but she had very low expectations. As she expressed it, I have worn down more than a dozen of female therapists. So the therapist was a bit scared when she met this patient. And this patient were famous in the whole clinic because of her very bizarre appearance. Experience of the therapy. She experienced the therapy as a secure and stable place where she were admitted to cry. On the other hand, she missed a more directive therapeutic style and concrete tools to help her with her symptoms. Regarding her experience of the therapist, <coughs> she described her as nice, but, uh, and she was uh, especially glad because the therapist reacted constructively with her dissatisfaction with the therapy and with the therapy herself. Furthermore, Having a good experience with a female therapist helped her trust women outside the therapy as well. She felt that the therapist had made her accept that she had a lot of negative feelings towards other people and had helped her reflect on these negative feelings in contrast to her earlier therapist whom she felt she could mani manipulate all too easily. Regarding the process, she describes the continuity of the therapy as a wake-up call 
attending the sessions week after week made it impossible for her to deny that everything was going to hell. Two experiences was of significant, of special significance. One concerned the therapist's capacity to, to admit and correct a failure she did. And uh, in the other experience, the therapist confronted the client with her lying, not only at outside, but also inside the session. This turned out, this uh, initiated a crisis in the relationship, but it also turned out to be a turning point. The client became more honest, admitted her lying, and became more tolerant towards her negative feelings. Outcome. A describes her benefits from the therapy in the following way. I feel better. I have become stronger. I feel that I'm okay the way I am. I do not have to be perfect. And I became strong enough, and that was especially important, to leave my boyfriend a violent uh, criminal person and stay single for a period. And now she found a new boyfriend who did not beat her. I feel more confident with women. Christmas is no longer a huge problem, and my relationship and my relationship to my only family, my aunt, is much better. At the same time, her mood is more grey than earlier, where she alternately felt happy and depressed. Conclusion. A recovered to our great surprise. The question is how the therapy contributed to this. On the basis of the client experience interview, a combination of factors seems to have contributed to it. Her motivation in combination with the fact, fact that her low expectation and earlier negative experience with psychologists were not confirmed. The continuity and lynch of the therapy, the female gender of the therapist, and not at least the therapist's capacity <coughs> to confront the client with her lying and to admit her own failures. Finally, it seems that A felt that the therapist had accepted her bizarre physical appearance, which was rather, which was very overwhelming, as opposed to previous therapists who wanted to change her. But. As I mentioned before, trees do not grow into the sky. After ending therapy, A still had a preoccupied attachment pattern. Case B. Case, case B, B is one of the more odd clients in the sample. She experiences herself as different from everyone else, and she is a declared Buddhist. To her, this means that she is open to everybody, that she makes no difference between people, and that she is equally attached to everybody. She aspires to come perfect, but does not expect this to happen in this life. She has started at several educations and is at intake a student in Tibetan. She has no boyfriend. She shares an apartment with a female friend as describes herself as the one who always has to give in. Beneath her somewhat indifferent appearance, she experiences herself as fat, ugly, and stupid. And it's, when she talks about this, this is a very express, impressive. She has an obsessive, compulsive, and depressive personality disorder, and is tormented by lack of energy <coughs> and an hedony. At intake, and after uh, therapy, her measures on the different uh, her different measures were, as you can see on this slide. And you can see that uh, her benches and purchases um, were reduced, but not enough but not in a way that it could be you know, detected in the RCT. In the RCT, she was a failure. She was neither recovered nor remitted. 
but she uh, changed from preoccupied to a secure attachment pattern, and she was less depressed. Expectations. B, expectations for the therapy were not very high. In some way, she expected to be helped, but she didn't have much respect for therapy at all, and asked herself for what use it could be. However, it changed radically through the process. Her experience of the therapy in the beginning, it was very hard for her to turn up to the sessions, to talk about herself, and often she didn't turn up at all. She had also initially wanted specific tasks and tools from the therapist, but however, she was very positively surprised. Of special importance, Uh, was her experience that the therapist was someone she could trust in and feel confidence in, who was attentive and who could give her the feeling that she was on her side. It was not the case in the beginning where she had the impression of a professional just doing her job. Another important thing was the flexibility of the therapist and the fact that the therapist did not react negatively when B cancelled the session, which she did very often in the beginning. Process B did not mention any significant experiences or turning points. What she emphasized was her development of confidence in an impartial person who didn't interfere and gave her time to reach at her own aha experiences. She stated that she was able to use the therapist once she found out she could trust her and that she listened in a genuine way. Outcome. After the therapy, B described herself as more self-confident than earlier and stated that for the first time she had a feeling of self-esteem. She had more energy and was able to stay focused on her various activities. She no longer had daily thoughts of how stupid she was or suicidal thoughts and had, during the process, become convinced that she wanted to live. Her bulimia had not disappeared but was reduced from several binges and purchases a day to a few on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. Conclusion. It seems as if the therapist-client match has contributed to C's healing experiences and to her development of a secure attachment. Hearing the interview, you get the impression of a Vinicotian sensitive and non-extrusive mother in relation to a fragile child needing to protect herself from disturbances from outside and to de develop in her own pace and way. She seemed to have needed a safe relationship in which she could be alone in the presence of another and it appears as if that was what she got. However, in the RCT, she was categorized as a bad outcome case. Oh, only 15 minutes. Inclusive discussion. Inclusive the dishes. Then I will hurry up and I will not go so much in details with the two other. What I would like to say about B, about C, uh, I can do it quickly. She was also a failure in the CT, but her bulimic <coughs> symptoms was reduced a lot. She didn't change in attachment pattern, and um, I think I will jump to the conclusion. Um, uh, with this uh, client. Uh, 
this client was very different from the other clients, and the uh, therapeutic process was also very different. In relation to the outcome, she, she described it herself with these words. I did, get, I did not get my life back. I got a life. I can concentrate and be attentive. I can trust grown-up women. All of them are not just like my mother in disguise. And I can reflect and think. I have also become more social. I do not like running hours every day, but I like to make sport together with other people. I can eat all different kinds of food. I can have food in the refrigerator and I'm conscious of what triggers my bulimia. But it's a long travel that is far from the end. Conclusion. In spite of being one of the failures in the RCT, seems, she also seems to have profited a lot from the therapy. This holds for her bulimic symptoms as well as for her self-experience her reflective functioning and her social competence. In the beginning, the psychodynamic approach was meaningless to her, but she profited, among other things, from the therapist's explanations of what was going on, and she surely began to think about her impulsive behavior and to make a pause between impulse and action. Compared to B, the more odd patient, it seems to have been a much more verbal and rational process with this patient as if she were going to learn an alphabet. And the last case, I will only say a few words about the last case. The last case, case drop out. <coughs> she didn't profit uh, from the therapist. You can't see uh, at, at, at these measures that she profit that she profited. Um, however, one thing that I find very important was that she, after therapy, before she dropped out, acknowledged that she had an eating disorder and that she needed help. Uh, this was the only client who had a male therapist, and you can reflect upon that, but we haven't time for that now, so I'll go to the conclusion for the whole trial. Conclusions aims. The aim of this was to get a more differentiated picture of the labels good and poor outcome and to learn about strength and limitation of PPT for preoccupied bulimic patients. The study has shown all the clients, except for the last one, seem to have profited a lot from PPT. Thus, failures in RCTs are not just failures, and quantitative outcome measures have to be complemented by qualitative measures. The different clients seem to have profited from common as well as different aspects of the PPT. For A, B, and C, the following aspects have been important. The length and continuity of the therapy, the reflective nature of the approach, and the non-judging and containing attitude of the therapist. Regarding the difference, the plasticity of the approach has probably made it possible for the therapist to adjust to the patient's different needs. Thus, B praised a more nonverbal and non intrusive process, C a more rational and verbal process. In both cases, the therapist seemed to have justice to these needs. Regarding A, the therapist seemed to have been able to confront the client, to fulfill her need for a therapist who was not afraid of her and who could handle her negative transference. With regard to the client, a strong motivation seems to have been important. Two of the three clients who were clearly satisfied with their therapist reported a strong resolve to stay in therapy, even through periods of doubt about the relevance of the approach. For all the clients, it took a great deal of time to use and profit by the psychodynamic approach. And 
Three out of four clients call for more active techniques focusing on the, focusing on the symptoms. All in all, we obli all in all, though we obviously acknowledge that the therapy as it has been conducted in the present study has not proven itself to be the most effective therapy for bulimic patients, the present examples illustrate that failures are not just failures and that very rewarding therapies can be hidden behind poor outcome cases. Thank you for your attention. It was in time. I am in time. Yes. It was too long. No. We have time. We, we have time. Först när jag säger något eller inte. Jättebra, tack. För, mm. Jag vill tacka dig Susanne för ditt föredrag och din presentation. Och jag tycker att det, det känns viktigt för mig att du understryker betydelsen av systematiska fallstudier och vad de kan visa genom att vända på perspektivet från RCT där frågan är hur terapi påverkar patientens symptom till frågan hur patienten använder terapi för att förändra sig själv och jag tycker att det är något av detta som har belyst då. Vi har eh, sju minuter, sju åtta minuter för diskussion. Så, varsågod då. Så, hej. Jag tänker att vi tänker att jag pratar till en kyrkstud med patienter i KBT, CBT. Du har sett att kontrastera vad de upplevt fortfarande i Ja. Det är som att kunna dra kliniska slutsatser i de olika patienter som förväljer olika behandlingar och som behövs som indikation av aktiva symptom i vilda åtgärder och insiktsmarkerade. Jeg ved ikke, om jeg har forstået dit spørgsmål rigtigt, men du spørger, om vi også har lavet interviewstudier med CBT-patienterne. Alle patienter, når de afsluttede terapien, har fået et, et semistruktureret interview. Det vi kaldte Client Experience Interview. Men vi har ikke bearbejdet dem alle sammen. Vi har kun, vi har kun nået til de, de her fire, som vi har udvalgt. Og det vi specielt ønskede at koncentrere os om, det var PPT i det første studie. Øh, men, men vi har tænkt os at lave et, et studie på baggrund af alle 70 patienter. Øh, vi ved ikke, om vi gør det selv, eller om det skal være et, en uh, Ph.D.-studerende, som, som, la, uh, som laver en forskning på alle uh, interviewene. Thank you very much for your very, very interesting study. Uh, I, I, I only have one question at the moment. Uh, when you expla explain that uh, those uh, three patients were regarded in RCT evaluation as, as, as not benefiting, and yet you had many uh, figures showing that they were benefiting from therapy. So what were the criteria for the RCT evaluation to, to, to uh, result in, in a negative evaluation? The outcome data, the outcome criteria was we have two categories, remitted or recovered. And to get the polymia nervosa diagnosis, Uh, according to the DSM-4, it will be changed in DSM-5, but according to DSM-4, you have to have two bulimic, and two bulimic episodes every week for at least three months. So to be recovered, you have to have null, zero. Mm -hmm. And to be remitted, you have um, just, you, you just do not fulfill the criteria for B-remitted. 
so, so for being recovered. So if you have one bulimic episode per week, you have been remitted. And if you have more than that, it is regarded as a failure. That's why we did it in this way is because that's the way they do in other studies. Yeah, yeah. So to be for this study to be comparable, there have been a lot of CBT studies comparing uh, interpersonal therapy or behavioral therapy, and they, they they use the same criteria, and that's the reason why we did it. But in a way, it's meaningless because yeah, yeah, yeah. You, it, it seems quite meaningless because you can see that that they remitted a lot, <laughs> yeah, yeah, in a way, yeah. yes. Obviously, Obviously they did, from, yes, from so, picture, yes. Yeah. Okay. But that's, that's some of you, you have, if you have to, to make a discussion uh, with, with people who make these studies, you have to, you do it in the same way. Yeah. Or you can discuss that, <laughs> if, if you have to do it in that way. Jag har bara eh, konkreta frågor alltså, kring ramen för terapi. Alltså, vilken, vilken frekvens på den, hur länge på den och vad avslutningen är. Avslutningen är kunde för ett så. Hur kunde man komma tillbaka? Hur, hur såg det ut med hur strikt av rambetingelserna? Ja. Och ytterligare en fråga. Ni har säkert, eh, det var säkert en tanke och hypotes som man får upp på den här priset. Du kan ju bara be Karin säga sitt namn. Ja. Det här var ju en fråga. Ja, altså, øhm, først terapierne. Øh, de to terapier, der blev sammenlignet, var CBT, Ad Modem, øh, Christopher Fairburn, who is the one who has made a lot of studies concerning bulimia nervosa. And that's a special model of therapy, and it uh, has a duration of six, six months. And PPT, uh, six months, uh, and it's w uh, one session, two sessions per week in the beginning, and then one session, and it uh, only for six months. And the PPT <coughs> was two years, two years, once a week. And the reason why it was two years was that we saw that it didn't make any meaning to compare a CPT with a, with a short uh, dynamic therapy who were not used in any clinical se settings. So we, so we made this uh, PPT therapy which was very much in line with clinical practice. You can discuss that. Um, and uh, regarding the follow-up, yes, um, we, I don't. I haven't any idea. I have some hopes, and um, you see, uh, this kind of study. It was, you know, I'm not unbiased in this study, and uh, and uh, when we we have once presented the the, the results from the CBT, and you can say it was a rather convincing study because it went against our bias. It was a conclusion, it was, what, what do you call it? Um, allegiance. Yeah, allegiance. It, it was against uh, researcher allegiance. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, so, I just hope for the <laughs> follow-up study, but I, 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 we haven't got the data yet. But I'm not very trustful. The data from the CBT were very convincing in favor of CBT. Very convincing. I think we have time for only one more okay. question. Yeah. Uh, my name is Jonas Hansson. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Just a short question that you can bring up with the upcoming study. The one that you presented is the outcomes. Just eh, efter precis att just. Yes. Eh, eh, och jag var också intresserad av en uppföljningsstudie. Eh, du säger I hope for it och så vidare. Min fråga är, har du någon tanke om när du tycker det skulle vara en lämplig tidpunkt för en uppföljningsstudie? Eh, idealt. Inte vad det skulle möjligt kunna göra. Utan hur lång tid efter tänker du att en uppföljning skulle kunna vara meningsfull? Alltså... Uh... 
Altså opfølgning, follow up time. Ja, altså vi, øh, vi følger øh, klienterne eller patienterne i alt i fem år. Fem år. Fra de starter til slut fem år. Og det vil sige, at efter PPT, så følger vi dem i tre år. Og jeg ved ikke, om det er ideelt, men, øh, men øh, det, kan, det kan Rolf Sandel sikkert sige noget mere om. Men, øh, men øh, det er, hvad vi, hvad vi har besluttet at gøre. Ja, og hvad vi har haft penge til. Mm. Okay, jeg ja, skal vi ikke slippe Rolf ind? Jo. Jeg vil lige sige, at det her studie var jo, det her studie var jo inspireret af Rolfs studie. Ja. Øh, og vi håbede jo at få det. <laughs> vi håbede at kunne bidrage på samme positive måde som Rolf. Men det viste sig ikke at være tilfældet. my talk where I, I talked about that what we could learn from this was exactly that the psychodynamic therapy should be more focused on the symptoms mm -hmm. and that some aspects of the CBT should be integrated into the therapy, mm -hmm. especially the focus on the symptoms. We totally agree and many patients find psychodynamic therapy very mysterious and, and, uh, and, and we could hear that from the interview as well. So you can really learn very much from these interviews. Och terapeuterna kan bidra kanske till att mystifiera terapin i fallet. Vilket inte var fallet i patient A här. Tack allihopa, tack Susanne. Tack för jeres kommentar. Vi ses här i fem övertal.